before I start this video, I just want to mention that I will be in the comments if you have any questions, so just leave a comment with your question and I always reply to comments. Without further ado, on to the video. What is up guys? Back again with another video and as promised today it is in regards to creating your own program. Now today I'm not actually going to give you an exact program, I'm just going to give you the run through of about six different points, how to create your own program based on you. This will apply to anything from powerlifting to running to gymnastics, it's just a principle that you can follow and apply it to anything. So it will take some thinking on your behalf but should about cover everyone. So without further ado, Let's get to it. You want to grab a pen and paper. This video may also be slightly longer. It depends how much I waffle, but you might just want to pause the video, write stuff down, because there's going to be some interaction that's needed to do to complete this. Point number one is experiment with exercise. And really this comes down to trying stuff out. Um, you just want to try as much as possible. Try some powerlifting, try some gymnastics, try different splits, try different exercises, different intensities. Just try a variety of movement and then you kind of get this feeling of what works for you, what you like, what you don't like. Do you like a push-pull split or do I like an upper-lower split? All that sort of stuff is just comes down to experience. So the first thing I'd recommend is try something. So start from somewhere. A good beginner place to start would be sort of three full body exercises or um, days a week uh, and then progress from there. Number two is program with purpose. Now what this comes down to is creating goals for yourself. Like there's no point going into a workout aimlessly and getting nothing achieved. You want to go with a purpose, with an idea in mind of what you want to get out of this. Even if it is just to get fit or have fun, there's still a purpose to your exercise. So number one will be to create goals. So I'm just going to jot down my goals on some post-it notes, stick them up here. I suggest you do the same because this is important for creating the rest of the program. So I'm going to come back to you when I've written them down. So hopefully you guys have some goals written out. These are my goals currently. I've actually got nine goals here. Now one thing that's very important when you're writing out your goals is you want to be specific. So you've got, I've got five seconds straddle planche. I haven't just got straddle planche or just planche. I've got five free handstand press-ups. I haven't just got to do some handstand press-ups. You know? You'll be specific about these things. Make it measurable and then you can evaluate how you're progressing towards these goals. So that is the first, the second thing to do. The first was to experiment. The second is to get your goals. So if you haven't made them specific, make them specific now. Hopefully you have your goals in mind and then we'll go now on to the next step. Right, so we just, pro we just had a program with purpose. Now we want to program with priority. So we have our purpose, our goals. Now you want to prioritize, prioritize these goals because Working towards nine goals in reality isn't really going to get us anywhere. It might progress us eventually, but we want to focus on the few, not the many. So it's very important to really have your primary goals, the ones you really want to achieve, um, and then the ones that once you've achieved those main goals, you can then maintain, which is a lot easier to do, and then work on your secondary goals. So to do this, we're going to want to group our goals sort of try and narrow them down a bit because splitting, if you have this many, if you have three, it might be very simple and you might have bang, one, two, three, you know exactly what ones you want most. But when you've got a big group like this, you want to split it down. So you want to have a look at the goals in front of you and you want to think what goals, how do these fit into groups? So for me, it seems quite obvious. Um, this is the process that I went through, by the way. So for me, the obvious grouping would be upper and lower. So I'll just split these out now for you and show you how that go. Right, so now I've split my goals up. I've got my upper body goals and my lower body goals. Now this makes it a bit easier to sort. So for me now, I've just got to think personally, what do I want to achieve most? So if you've watched my goals video, you'll know that my two main goals at the moment are the straddle, planche, and the front lever. So I want to be working these as much as possible. So these are going to be my primary goals and then the rest are just going to have to take a secondary position. So for my upper body I want to be working these as much as I can. These three I'm going to leave. So if you guys want to do a similar sort of thing just have a look at your goals, split them up 
I've gone with upper and lower, you could go with endurance and strength, you could go with flexibility and strength, kind of however it seems obvious to split, for me it was upper and lower. So again I'm going to do the same thing here, I'm going to go with my primary goals and my secondary goals. So I think in reality my primary goals are probably actually how they are now. My flexibility is pretty close to these two so I'm kind of not really too worried. Flexibility is good but these I want to get up a lot and just improve my overall strength. So there we are guys, programming with priority. Got our primary goals and our secondary goals. I wouldn't suggest more than two goals for your primary goals. Two things to work towards is a good number to focus on. So now we've organized our goals and prioritized, we want to move into the fourth stage, which is selecting the split. So now you've got your goals all nicely laid out, you can kind of look at what split you might go for. Now this again comes down to experience and experimenting, the first point that I mentioned. But for me here, I could go with a couple of things. I've got two leg exercises or lower body exercises, so I'm going to have to have some lower days in there. These are both individually a push and a pull, and these are both a push and a pull. So I could go have a pure push day where I do like planche, squat, what a catch. Um, so I could go have a pure push day where I have a planche, squat, um, ring dips, all that sort of stuff, and then a pure pull day of levers and deadlifts. So it's kind of just how you want to group them. But for me, I want to be maximizing the amount of times I can train these two a week and these two a week. I mean, primarily these two. These are definitely going to come above these two in terms of goals. So for me, if I'm thinking about how many times I can go a week, I'm going to be looking at probably maybe the more full body, upper lower split, because that's going to give me the most training frequency. So if I was going with an upper lower split, conveniently I already have them laid out in an upper lower way. So now I have my split. I've decided I'm probably going to go down the route of upper lower. It's important now to consider your lifestyle factors. So how much stress is in your life? Are you working 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and getting six hours sleep? Realistically, you're not going to be able to do a lot of training, if any at all. Uh, if you're a student and you're getting unlimited sleep and you maybe have some stress around exam times, you can kind of go full hog in uh, the term time and then exam time is when we turn it down a bit. So this again is coming back to yourself and then really evaluating your stress level. So I'm going to use myself again as an example and talk you through how I chose mine. So I work five days a week, eight to four thirty. I usually get between seven and a half and eight and a half hours sleep. Usually between eight and eight and a half. So my sleep is good. My stress isn't too high, but it's not low either. So I'm going to go for. I couldn't train six days a week. That would kill me. Um, and probably four days a week is maybe fine, but maybe not enough volume to really push my goals. So I'm going to go with sort of four and a half days a week, which would be five days a week, but one day a slight deloaded day. So slight less volume, but still getting the frequency in there. So for the upper lower split, that would look like probably three upper body days because I got more in my upper body group and two lower body days. So that really does work well with my goals. I can train both of these on one day. So I've got three times a week I'm training straddle planche and levers and I'll probably split those out. So I'm gonna have one deadlift day, one squat day and that seems to be a pretty even coverage for all my goals. So now we've got our goals, we've prioritized our goals, we found a split that we want. Next we want to bring the balance. So now we've decided on some upper and an upper and lower split or whatever split you've decided on, you want to keep your splits balanced. So when you're designing a training day, you want to make sure you've got equal amounts of sort of different movements. So if you're going with an upper body split, you want to have equal amount of pushes to equal amount of pulls. If you're going with lower body, you're going to want to have equal amount of quad dominant exercises and equal amount of hamstring dominant exercises. Very important to keep this balance intact. Obviously where this wouldn't apply is if you had some personal weaknesses and you wanted to improve those. And breaking that down further, if you were having just a push day, you'd want to have equal amount of horizontal push as you would vertical push. And the same with pull, you want to have equal amounts of vertical pull, so pull ups to horizontal pulls. 
So bearing that in mind, my program would personally look like upper and lower split. I would have two push exercises, two pull exercises. That is balanced. One push would be horizontal, one push would be vertical. One pull would be horizontal, one push would uh, pull would be vertical. So that right there is a very balanced and equal view of things. And the same here. Got a squat and a deadlift. These are both free really quad dominant and um, glute dominant exercises. So I'll probably have to pair those both with a hamstring exercise and then maybe another quad dominant exercise and another hamstring exercise. So that right there would be how you create a balanced program. Make sure you have both push, pull, quad dominant, um, hamstring dominant. If you're split in between endurance and strength, make sure you have a nice even split between those two. However you're going to do it, make sure you train both ends of the spectrum. This also applies to training your mobility as well as your strength. So now we've got an idea of how our training days are going to look. Um, we can start to think about volume, which is probably one of the more important factors. You want enough volume to um, make your body progress, but you also don't want too much that you're going to end up overtraining and being fatigued. So this comes down to the split again, but it also comes down to your volume. So we want to look again at our lifestyle, how much stress we're under, how much volume we can do. And the thing I would say is start low and increase because you can always increase your volume if you're not making enough progress, but it's better off than getting sick and being tired if you're doing too much. A great place to start, I would suggest, is using a five by five method. Now this is based, I think, off old Soviet weightlifting or Olympic lifting programs and it basically works off the protocol of 25 reps being the holy grail of reps. So this would then extrapolate out to be five sets of five, six sets of four, four sets of six, three sets of eight, etc. You're aiming for around that 25 rep mark and that's what I personally usually use. If you're going more towards the six sets of four, five sets of five, you're gonna be hitting more of the strength end of the spectrum. If you're going towards the three sets of eight, two sets of 12, you're gonna be going for more hypertrophy. So bearing that in mind, think about your volume, think about what you wanna achieve. I'm going for strength here, plus my volume I can't have too high. So I know from experience and experimenting that I can probably handle four five by five exercises in a workout. So if we would apply this now to our Horizontal push, which would be straddle planche. Horizontal pull, which would be levers. And then we want a vertical push, which would be something like the starter press or the handstand press up. And a vertical pull, which would be a one-arm chin up. So that really works out perfectly. We can kind of alternate these two and incorporate everything into every single training cycle. So that for me is a really ideal split. Yours might not line up that easily. Um, you may have mostly horizontal pulls as your target so you're just going to have to throw in some pull-ups in there or something. So another quick tip is if you are um, converting like seconds here into reps, so if you're going with a 5x5, five five, um, for every one rep you have you want to do one second of eccentric and two seconds of isometric. So if I'm going for straddle planche and I want to hit five sets of five, I'm going to hit five sets of ten second holds or five sets of five second eccentrics. Hope that makes sense. So now it comes to polishing the program. Hopefully we have a good idea of how we're going to organize our goals, what our primary goals are, what our secondary goals are, how our splits going to look, what the volume's going to look like, and how our routines are going to look out. Now it really comes down to how am I going to turn these into micro cycles? And that is down to your deloading and recovery. If you have a very intense program, you're going to want to deload more often. If you've got a slightly lighter program, you're going to want to deload less often. The best way to deload, in my opinion, is you either half the volume or you half the intensity. So you could do exactly the same as you usually do. They say there are five sets, do two sets. Or you could do five sets, but of a much less intense exercise. So that one's up to you guys, and that really comes down to personal preference. You want to deload enough so you're not going to overtrain, but you also don't want to deload too often because you're going to take away from the progress that you might make. And lastly is to assess. So it's all good making a program. You now want to assess and test that bitch out. Give it a try for four weeks, six weeks. Take a deload and test. 
test your strength, test your endurance, whatever your goals are, test against them. See if you've improved, if you haven't improved, back to the drawing board and reassess. It's as simple as it gets really. So hopefully guys, that's enough to take you through creating your own program. This is gonna take a lot of personal effort really. I'm not just gonna give you a program because one size does not fit all. We're all beautiful little unicorns. Um, you need to think about it yourself and create your own program. So if you ever get stuck at any point during this video, please leave a comment down below. I always reply to comments. And if you did find this uh, video helpful, please leave a like and maybe a subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video.